So welcome, Susan. Um, hi. Hi, I'm Carl. Nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Okay. Hey, okay. Um, so, um, am I right in assuming that you filled out an informed consent form up there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. And uh, do you have any questions about that around confidentiality, how that works? That's pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay, the only one I'll just kind of hammer home is um, the only time I would ever have to break confidentiality, so in other words, kind of break this trust that we have that no information would leave this room, in other words, our minds basically, um, is if you were to tell me that, um, or I were to and I suspect for any reason that you were at any kind of immediate risk of harming yourself or another person, okay? So that could include um, kind of anyone outside this room, especially a child, right? Uh, and in that case, I would have to notify someone, but to be honest, you would be one of the first people to know about that uh, at the same time, okay? Mm -hmm. That sound good? Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah. Something else we had you fill out, I hope we didn't have you fill out too much paperwork, but um, was an intake form. And that was just a way of us getting a general sense of what's been going on for you, okay? Um, kind of like your personal history, medical stuff, really standard things. But we also asked you a couple of questions around what's been happening for you, um, how you've been feeling, right? Um, but we, I think we had you do that about a couple of days ago. Um, so one thing I like to do because anything can happen in a couple of days. I don't want you to feel like you're tied to that story that you told us, um, is I wanted you to just tell us in your own words why you were here, okay? Um, and just before we do start that, um, I am gonna be taking some notes, okay? Um, we are doing a particular type of treatment here. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, um, or um, if the reason why you came to us was because you had, had heard of it, but we do something here called cognitive behavior therapy. Mm -hmm. um, it is not the only possible approach to the types of problems that you've been telling us about, um, especially in the intake form. Um, and if at any time that doesn't work for you, you can just tell us and we can adopt either a different approach or if we don't feel like we're the right people for that, mm -hmm. we can find someone else for you that can help, okay? Um, so. As we go through today's session, you'll definitely get a sense of what cognitive behavior therapy is about. But just to give you a rough idea, the bottom line is just for us to get a sense of kind of why you're thinking what you're thinking, why you're feeling what you're feeling, and kind of why you're doing what you're doing. And a way of looking at that is to think of how all those three things, your thinking, your feeling, and your behavior, in other words, you're doing, are connected to each other, specifically in the way of trying to figure out how your thinking might be impacting how you feel, right, and what you end up doing, okay? Now, if that sounds really abstract and strange, don't worry, I'm gonna spell this out as we talk to each other, okay? Okay. Um, but before we do start, any questions around that? Um, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm just interested in seeing how this works. That's great. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so then without any further ado, can you just give me a sense of kind of what brought you here today and how things have been going for you? Um, things have been pretty stressful recently. I'm looking for a job, um, hopefully what I want to do, but um, going through, I, well, I went through an interview the other day mm -hmm. and I really want this job. Like I'm super excited for it, but I just, I don't know, I'm nervous, I feel like I messed up a lot, mm. and, and just but those thoughts just, I don't know, like it's kind of nerve-wracking, thinking that I could just fail this and all the other interviews. And... Mm -hmm. So you've been on the job hunt for a while now? Um, a, a couple of months now, yeah. Okay, and the job hunt has been, for the most part, like you've been telling me, kind of unsuccessful? Uh, for the most part, this yeah. is one of the first people who've actually called me back, and yeah, I've yeah. heard it's like a great place, great organization, and so I just, I really want to be a part of it, and okay. I wanted to be successful, but I don't Yeah, know. okay, and so, so it's this big opportunity you've got coming up, and yeah. on the one hand, I'm hearing that, you know, like you're really excited, almost like thrilled at the prospect, mm -hmm. but kind of on the flip side, or like right next to that, is this feeling of, oh no, what if I don't get it, mm. right? Um, this big opportunity might get lost. Am I kind of getting you right there? Yeah, I'm exactly like, I don't know, I'm so awkward in an interview, and 
Mm -hmm. Unveil it. Oh, where else do I go next? And right. Well, sorry, I misheard that. So you already had the interview for this job. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And now you're just in the waiting game. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So you've already had it. Um, and you're kind of revisiting it in your mind, it sounds like. Like, did I say and do the right things? Did I present myself the right way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you were to kind of rate your performance overall, like in terms of all the interviews you've ever had, how you felt, like where would you say you were in terms of like the best possible Susan in that <laughs> um, interview? That's a good question. Maybe a, a five? I, I, well, yeah, I, I probably should have given you a number there. So, <laughs> I'm a five out of what, like a hundred or ten? Um, let's let's say ten. Let's out of ten. ten. Okay, okay. So maybe not your absolute best. Yeah. Not your absolute worst. Somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. It sounds like okay. Um, what are some of the things you think you could have done better in that interview? Everything. Everything. Okay. 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 Feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Just like. Just communicating my thoughts and yeah. stumbling on my words because I'm super nervous. Mm -hmm. um, did I make even eye contact? Did I fiddle too much? Just, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of like don't even put words in your mouth here, but um, it sounds like a lot of these thoughts are like, like what if I had done this better, or what if. Um, say they noticed me fidgeting when I was doing this part, or what if they had noticed me stumble over these words? Yeah. Right? How much is that going to weigh in on their decision, ultimately, about whether or not to hire me? Yeah, and, and yeah. I'm just like, I kind of look at them and I'm like, it's, it's hard to tell, like, is they, do I say the right thing? Mm. Are they giving me a look of disapproval? Am I reading into it too much? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, you've already given me a good sense of this, right? Uh, you've been kind of telling me like what you were thinking, how you were feeling. Can you give me a sense of like what it was like to be you in that interview? Like, so what was going on in your mind? Right? As they're asking you questions, or like as you're answering, the moment you finish answering them, like, what are some thoughts and images going through your mind? Um, let's see. I just did I answer enough? Mm. Did I say exactly what yeah. you wanted? Here, yeah, yeah. Kind of looking to them in hopes of gauging whether that's something that I did right or wrong. Or mm -hmm. I guess they're not really supposed to show that. So. Yeah. So is it like a kind of constantly wondering this thing that I just did or said, is that what they were looking for? Or did I did I say too little, too much? Is it like that kind of thing? Yeah. 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 Okay. Too little, too much. Am I saying the right thing? And yeah. Yeah. I can see that that's really nerve-wracking because you're not only in your own head, right? You're not only trying to keep track of what you need to say mm -hmm. or what you need to do or how you need to present yourself in the interview. You're also almost like trying to mind read at the same time. Like, wait a second, okay, what must they be thinking about me right now? And are they are they judging me in this way or that way? Like, that sounds like a lot of work mentally. Yeah. 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 I I found myself right away after the interview. <laughs> so slept right away. Well, after yeah. the dwelling a bit, but yeah. Okay, all oh, right. It was, it was pretty tiring. Okay, so there was some dwelling after the interview too, right? Of course. Okay. Okay, and then like sleeping, like there's so much exhaustion. Yeah. Now remind me, when did this interview take place? Was it um, about a week or? It was about two days ago. Oh, two days. Okay. Yeah, it was about 11 o'clock. And then um, after it was done, I just... I couldn't even eat. I just went home. Oh, okay, so it's even affecting your eating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just needed sleep. Okay. And then since then, it's just been a lot of main word I heard you using there. I've just been like really nervous, like yeah. nerve wracking, kind of like worry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other feelings too that have come from that? Anything else? Um, just already thinking disappointment. I don't know. Mm. Just worry about failing. Um, they said it'll be a week before I hear it, but I don't know if they realize how nerve-wracking it is. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like for you, like one day is about one month. Yeah. Right? You're waiting for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, especially yeah. when you're like, I'm super eager. I've already like planned it. Thank you know, just follow up. I don't know. Yeah. But when do I send that? 
focus, you're also wondering kind of what these next steps should be for you, and I don't want to bother them. Yeah. So it's kind of like the same thing you had in the interview, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I really hope I'm not saying the wrong thing here, but also after the interview, I really hope I don't mess things up mm -hmm. while they're deliberating too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. That, that's a lot of stuff swirling around in anyone's mind, for sure. And one thing I heard you saying too is, so you're not just planning around like what you want to say to them after the interview or following up. You're also kind of planning in a way for the worst case scenario, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how does that make you feel? Kind of like this. Um, sad. Yeah. Depressed a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just thinking that maybe I didn't get it. So what do I do next? And yeah. What do I do next? Or um. Okay, and it's going to sound like I'm just kind of pushing the worry as far as it can go, but um, something I like to ask people is, so if that were to happen, like what would be the, just the absolute possible worst outcome of you not getting this job? Um, I'd just be really upset, in all honesty. I'd yeah, really upset. really okay. like, look forward to getting this is the one, but I yeah. mean, there might be other jobs, I don't know, I just... Don't know if I get this one, anybody else will look at my resume. Because it's taken so long to get this one interview, and it, the job market's so hard, it's just maybe I'll have to start looking for unemployment or like services like that. Because I need to pay bills, and it's very stressful. Just, I don't know. Yeah. So there's a couple of things I heard there, right? And they all make sense to me. Okay. So, you're worried not only about potentially like hitting this big disappointment, this big feeling of upset if you don't get this job, but it's the job that you've really, really wanted for a long time. Like this is the job in your life, right? And it, it's the ideal one that you, not just some random thing you apply for, like, hey, you know what, if I get this, cool. Mm -hmm. This is this is the job for you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get this one, I mean, like, am I going to get any other job? Right, and yeah. I mentioned, um, I think you had mentioned, like, like at some point, could this mean that I won't get anything? I mean, if I can't get this dream job of mine, like, am I just gonna have to, like, settle for nothing or like file for unemployment or, you know? And then all these scenarios kind of start snowballing in your mind. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, we gotta pay bills, and yeah, it's it's been a struggle. So yeah. Where do I go from there? It's, yeah. Man. So it makes a lot of sense to me, like based on everything you're thinking of, it makes a lot of sense that you would feel not just nervous and worried, but almost, I mean, again, if I'm using a word that's too strong here, let me know, but like based on how you're currently thinking and viewing this situation, like this feels almost hopeless in a way. Like, oh my goodness, so like, if I don't get this job, like this could mean something really seriously bad for me. Okay, um, so was there anything that we've kind of missed with, with what's been going on for you there? Um, that's mainly the thing right now. It just, everything else kind of spirals, like paying bills, things like that. Yeah. But mainly, it's this, this week. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Oh yeah, pretty much everything else in your life feels like it's taking the back burner. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. This, this so, waiting game. Absolutely, yeah. It's almost like you have your hand like on a hot stove, and if someone's pinching you on your leg, you're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I've got my hand on the stove right now. Yeah. Okay, okay. That makes perfect worry sense. About that, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and based on what you've said, I'm actually really glad that you decided to come talk to us today. Well, me in particular, but come talk to us um, here because of what we do. Again, cognitive behavior therapy. Um, it's a great way to get us to try to get a better sense of how you're thinking might be, here's a word that I like to use a lot, might be actually even like sabotaging in a way um, all sorts of other parts of your life, okay? Uh, and one way that we do this in cognitive behavior therapy is through this particular approach to our thinking, feeling, and behavior. It's called the ABC technique or the ABC model, okay? It's really straightforward. Let's put this down for a second, okay? Um, and I'm also going to stand up. Hope that's not too strange, okay? Because I can't really reach all the way up here. Um, now, the way the ABC model works, okay?
Okay, so first I'll just kind of explain what each of these means, okay? And then we're gonna see if we can actually apply everything you've been talking about to this model, okay? And the hope, it's not just, you know, some kind of pointless abstract exercise like, hey, we just kind of mapped out Susan's problems, yay. Um, the whole point is for us to kind of be the figure out that once we have a map of this, right, once we see where we are on the map, we can also figure out a way to move on that map. So in other words, a way, hopefully, out of this problem for you, okay? Or at least to make this problem, like, not as bad as it was when you came in. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Okay. So the A part, now the fancy word for this is, it's what we call an activating event. That's the A, activating event. This is just, I'm not going to put here, I'm going to write stuff. Okay, this is the stuff that happens to you in life. It's whatever situation brought you here, the circumstances that you find yourself in. Okay, so this I think should be pretty clear to us in terms of like the stuff that's happening to you. Um, the big thing that brought you in, if you were to put it in your own words, like, what brought you in here today? Uh, interview stress. <laughs> interview, absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to put here, so the big key word, stress is a good word, we're, we're going to hold on to that, okay? okay? So interview, right, and at the same time, it's not just the fact that you had an interview, because that could be like a super awesome thing, yeah. the interview is also something that's happened and you're in the waiting game now, right? So now, waiting for, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for? An answer? Yeah, we're waiting for an answer basically, right? We're waiting for an answer. Um, I'll be even more precise here on whether I got the job. In fact, I'm going to push that even further, right? Because, like we were saying, not just any job, whether I got the, I'm going to put like right here, because this is, right, yeah. the job, right? The one that matters. Okay, so I'm going to put like a little smiley face here. Like, this is the job that's been the most important to you. I'll put like a little star, got good drawing skills, you can see, okay? Right? This is the job that matters to you the most, okay? So again, A just stands for whatever's happened to you. Like notice here we haven't put any feelings or anything else here. It's just, this has happened to us, okay? Now I'm gonna skip this guy for a second, okay? C stands for consequences, okay? Now the two big consequences that we think about in CBT are feelings. Now these are two different types of things. Well, I'll ask you first, what do you think we might mean by feelings? That word gets thrown around a lot in our culture. Um, like, what's a feeling? I just want to say, like, being sad. Um, Actually, I'm going to start putting, I'm going to put that one down in case we forget it. Okay? <laughs> I don't think you'll forget feeling sad, but you just mentioned one example of an emotion, right? Mm -hmm. Being sad is definitely an emotion. Okay? But we also feel other things too, right? Like, what does feeling sad feel like in your body? Um, it, um, I don't know, tension maybe? Tension, mm -hmm. right? Do you feel all kind of like uppy and energetic? And no. probably not, right? No, so I don't see whatsoever. Exactly, yeah, there you go. So we also have sensations, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to notice for things like stress and anxiety, like the tension you mentioned, like, ah, right, feeling really stressed out. So we have feelings, but we also have under consequences, just the stuff that we do, and the fancy word for this is just behavior, right? What we actually end up doing. So I'll just, right, what we do, okay? So you've got to start it off really nice here, okay? So we have sad, Another big one that I heard, I'm going to get us started off, I heard you say nervous, right? It's yeah. nerve-wracking, right? Nerves. So I'll just put dot, 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 because there were a lot of words you used there that are like just all around that nervousness family, okay? What else would you say around feelings? Um, tired. Ah. I did just pretty much want to just sleep everything off. Absolutely, yeah. So feeling tired, for sure. 
Um, Anything else that you were feeling there? Um, scared. Ah, so there's fear. Yeah, so feeling scared. Okay. Um, worried. Worried. Absolutely. Super worried about not getting this stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. There are a lot of like what ifs we're talking about. We're going to yeah. get back to that. Okay. So we've got sad. I'll even put slash. Like I think you said upset too. Right? Nervous, tired, scared, worried. That's a pretty good place to start. Do you want to add anything else? Or are we good to start there? Um, I can't think of anything. Okay. Now, the reason why I left this one alone is because this is the one that all of us, like me too, by the way, like not, not just the clients that I see, right? Everyone tends to jump over this one. Now, there's a B there because this stands for beliefs. Now, beliefs to me is a word that it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a little abstract. I don't like it too much. I like to think of thoughts instead. So here, just think of, well, think of anything that just pops up in your mind, right? So thoughts can be words sometimes, like thinking to yourself like, oh, I'm so stupid, or I wonder if I left the stove on, right? Thoughts, or they can be images, like thinking of a memory of like, oh, that time we went skating, or the movie I just saw, okay? So we're thinking of thoughts, and the reason why I skipped it at first, and because we all skip it, is because these thoughts tend to be automatic. That we call them automatic thoughts. They just pop up, okay? Now I want you to try, this can be hard. This is why we kind of do this work together. Try to think to yourself, what were some of the things you might have been thinking, or are still thinking, during this process of waiting for an answer? Um, I messed up. I messed up. Okay. Good place to get us started, yeah. Like, there was this one question, and I just didn't know the answer to it at all. Yeah. And I just, I kind of made it up. Uh-huh. Um, I think I could obviously tell, so I just I messed up. How about I add there, too, they, okay? Because you're thinking something about not just you, like, I messed up. They could tell. Right? In fact, this one's going to be a stand-in for all sorts of thoughts for us. Uh, I'll just put this in quotes, kind of like, you know, so they could tell that um, I don't know what I'm talking about. They could tell that I'm nervous. They can tell that I'm fidgety. It, it's kind of like this general thought about what are they thinking about me kind of thing, right? Okay, so I messed up. They could tell. What else do you think? Just how I feel in the interview. I failed. Yeah. Messed up, but I failed the interview, right? Um, didn't do a good job. I could have answered something differently. Yeah. Um, could have done better. Okay. Now, let's see if we can help each other out here. If you have a thought like, I messed up, they could tell. I failed, I didn't do well, couldn't have done better. What do you think that you're thinking right now about the job prospect? Uh, I didn't get it. I probably. didn't get it, yep. So they probably did better than me. So it's almost like a prediction. Oh yeah, like, that's, actually, that's actually another one, right? Yeah. So someone did better, I'll put that one first. Someone did better, all right? And let's put one here, at the end, I'm not getting it. But this, it, it, it's almost like there, there, are, there are two things happening here, right? So like one, we can almost see like these thoughts are like building up to the big, ugh, I'm not getting it, right? And this one's almost a prediction. Like, well, in fact it is. I'm not getting it. It's a way of kind of, you know, it's just not going to happen. Now, I kind of wonder if it's even at this point with sending thank you letters. I'm yeah. not getting it. I see there, there are so many thoughts here that go on. Oh, we need more space. What's the point? Right? Should I even send anything else? I remember you mentioning, again, this is where I said to you, I don't mean to be like a, you know, a real kind of downer about this, but I wanted to see how far we could push this. Right? Like, what's the point? I'm not getting it. If you don't get this job, like, what are you thinking to yourself? Oh my goodness, if I don't get this. Failed. Yeah. Yeah. So so it shows up here. 
Yeah, so it's kind of like, it's almost like, would you say the thoughts like, oh my God, like, I'm a failure. Like, I just can't, okay? I'm a failure, I failed, right, whatever it is. I, and if that's true, what does that mean? Um, I'm probably going to fail that next job interview. It's just going to, I don't know. I'll keep Family, right? And that's a really hard, that's why when I said before, like what you're saying makes sense, I wasn't saying that to be like, yay, you know, I was saying it makes sense if you think to yourself, I'll keep failing, right? And this is going to be the key to us. If you have all these thoughts here, this is where CBT, I know this looks like a mess, right? We'll try to clean it up, okay? If you're thinking to yourself, all these thoughts, this totally makes sense. Right, feeling sad, upset, nervous, tired, scared, worried, right? Angry. Oh, that's another one. Angry. Where does yeah. the anger come from, too? Um, beating myself up, I failed. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so angry, I failed, okay? Yeah, so at the end here, I could see that, like, you kind of start with. If we were to kind of tell a story, it would be like, I'm nervous about what happened, I'm kind of scared and worried, I'm so exhausted from thinking about it. I'm really sad and upset at the fact that, like, I don't know, like, I might not get this, and what's that going to mean? And at the end, right, this thought of, like, well, if I don't get this, and I'm constantly failing, and I'm going to keep failing, I'm really angry about it. Like, what's going on? Does that kind of, you know... Just looking at that, does that kind of sum up what things have been like? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Like, like there might have been a couple of things that we missed there. And of course, we're not saying this is a perfect map of everything you've been feeling in the past couple of days. It's a lot of your thoughts right now. Okay. Now, one thing that we like to do, so once we're at this point, we like to focus a little bit here, just for a second, just kind of drop in. Okay, and ask ourselves, out of all of these thoughts, okay, so we'll go through them again, okay, out of all of these thoughts, I'm going to want you to think to yourself, which one of these is just the worst? Like the worst thought in your mind, like, oh, wow, like, that's the one, like, when I let that one sink in, if I close my eyes or my head hits the pillow, oh, that's the one that just brings up everything, whatever it is, Okay. So I'll start from the top and I'll let you tell me, okay? So we have, I messed up, they could tell, um, I failed, I didn't do well, could have done better, someone did better, I'm not getting the job, what's the point, I'm a failure, I failed, I'll keep failing. I guess failed, it's, it's circled there and it shows up multiple times. It's Interesting, I hope I didn't kind of push you into saying that, no. but yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah, it shows it's, up a lot of there, that happens. Yeah, it's... Yeah. It, failure, I guess, is the fear. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a big fear to have. And that's what, again, coming back to it, it really makes sense. If you're thinking to yourself, I failed, right? Or even worse, like, I'm a failure. All of these consequences, these emotions, these feelings make a lot of sense, right? Um, okay, so how about we decide on one way of framing that thought? So is it just the fact that, you know, I failed, or is there something else there? Is it, I'll keep failing, or I'm a failure? Which one is the worst there, you would say? Like, if you were to rate them, so we have, you know, I failed, we have, um, I'll keep failing, or I'm a failure. Like, which is the worst one in your mind? I'll keep failing. I'll keep failing. So, yes, yeah, like this thing, it's like, it's just going to keep going, right? In infinite failing. Yeah, because it sounds like this one here is like, okay, well, I feel this time. This is, no, it's going to keep going. Okay, so what I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm just going to take all these off the board for now, except for the one we just identified, okay? And if we're going too fast with this, by the way, just let me know. Okay. So the big one that showed up for us, and I'm going to be all dramatic, I'm going to use red, okay, hopefully this works, okay. 
Because a hot thought, is what we call this, a hot thought is a thought that like almost burns you up in a way, okay? So, I'll, it's not going to work too well for us, but, okay. I'll keep failing. This is the big thing, okay? All right, now, now of course, we both know, because we just went through this, we both know this isn't the only thought on your mind. Right? There's tons of them. And in fact, who knows? You might have been thinking other things too, right? We'll get to that later. Like you might have been thinking some positive things too, like, like wow, I really tried hard, or like whatever else it is, right? Or like that lady who asked me the third question was kind of cool, right? You might have had tons of thoughts in your mind. But this big one here, like this hot thought we're calling it, because I'll put the word hot, okay? Not hot as in like it's awesome, but it's something that just kind of burns at us in terms of our feelings, mm -hmm. okay? This is the one that's doing all the damage, really. Like, this is pulling the most weight for us, okay? So, looking at this thought, what I want us to try to do, okay, is something I like to call, just, well, I'm sure you've heard of this. Have you heard, like, playing devil's advocate before? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But what does that mean to you if you're playing devil's advocate with something? You're pretty much giving the opposite opinion and thought to them. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's a perfect way of putting it, right? So even if, you know, say you totally agree like 100% or even 90% with one opinion, you're trying your best, 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 best in the world to give an opposite opinion, right? To argue for the other side, right? So, like a debating class or something. Absolutely. Yeah, it's almost like we're doing like a debating class with your own thought together, okay? That's a great way of thinking of it. Absolutely. It's a good technique in life in general. So, okay, let's look at this. In fact, I'll just take this off, okay? All we have, I right, make this super dramatic, is this one thought, like, poof, okay? And what we're going to do is basically kind of like a pro and con list. Now in CBT, what we call this is we think of like, what's the evidence? Like almost like we're in a courtroom, right? All right so they say we're prosecuting this and we're gonna be the defense at the same time, okay? Um, what's the evidence for this claim, right? As it applies to you, what's the evidence for and what's the evidence against it? Okay, we're gonna do both, right? We're not gonna just you know, try to attack it. And he's like, oh, there's no way this is true. Obviously, you've been thinking this, right? Like I said, it makes sense. You've been feeling this way for a long time, and it comes from this kind of thought. Obviously, there's something here that we have to talk about, okay? So, and what's the evidence against? Okay. Now, so let's start with the evidence for, right? So what's the evidence that supports this idea that I'll keep failing? Um, evidence for? Yeah. Uh, I guess I just think about like past failures. It just keeps coming up. Okay, past failures, okay. Okay, so past failures. And so since we're going to try to like flush out this evidence, right? Can you give me some examples of past failures um, that would make you think this, like, I'll keep failing? Well, I have had in job interviews that haven't been very successful. Okay, so I'll put here. I'm different fields, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that a different field? Yeah. Okay. So especially like it was just like a retail job or something. And oh, okay. And then back and so especially job interviews. Um, so not necessarily like for this specific kind of job or like job type, but you've had other job interviews that haven't been successful. Yeah. Okay. Haven't. Um, haven't resulted in job. Okay. Okay, what other evidence do we have for this? Um, I guess maybe it's more prediction, but mm -hmm. if I fail in this one, maybe I won't have the answers for the next. 
Yeah, maybe I won't have the answers for the next. Maybe I'm just not prepared to find them. Oh, okay, okay, so like maybe there's like something about me. So if you were to think of yourself like, what? Okay, let's, let's dig a bit deeper into that, right? So like thinking about kind of like why that prediction might be true, like I'll keep failing. What would it be about you in particular or like, or like something about you that would make this true? Like, is that... I think you said not being prepared. Yeah. Okay. Um, so would you say in the past you haven't been prepared for some things? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Though I thought I was prepared going in. I think we had, like, that one question just threw me off completely. Oh, so okay. Maybe, okay. Maybe I wasn't prepared at all. Okay, it's all right. Past lack of prep. Okay, it's a good point. Uh, and then I'll put like, as an example, you, you, you give a really good example, um, questions, right? So just like, yeah, being prepped for the kind of things, what were you going to say? I just was thinking about just coming out of, or coming out of college and stuff. And it's like having a test and like reviewing everything that was not on the test. Right. That you think was relevant, then you get to the test and it's a completely different question. So I guess... <laughs> yeah. That's how I felt in this situation. I'm like, <laughs> that's frustrating. All yeah. that effort pans out to like, oh, nothing. It's like, oh, but I, I prepped for all of X, yeah. but then you're asking me about why. What's yeah. going on here? Okay. And why yeah. being the question? And why being the exact question they ask you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so past lack of like the correct kind of preparation. Um, any other evidence for this claim that you'll keep failing, especially at job interviews or at landing any kind of job? Any other evidence? Uh, I don't know. Just okay. It's, like it's a feeling. It's like I feel like I'm just gonna. I know it's a thought, but it just feels like I'm gonna fail. Like continue failing. Absolutely. Okay, let's honor that. Okay, so that we can have a kind of gut feeling about things, right? Like it's like this, like. Mm, I don't, okay, so you know what, let's just put that down, not even judging whether it's a, you know, strong enough piece of evidence, we'll just say, you know, it's my gut feeling that things aren't going to go well, and who knows, maybe that gut feeling comes from stuff like this, right, like, who knows where it comes from, okay, so, is there anything else to add there for now, if you think of anything, you can just stop me, but, is that a good place to start? Okay, so we've got past failures, especially at job interviews um, that haven't resulted in a job, and not necessarily in ones that were like exactly of the type that you just applied for, but just job interviews. Um, past cases where you weren't fully prepared for a job um, interview, sorry, um, especially like certain questions that just kind of floored you, like, oh my goodness, why didn't I know they were going to ask me stuff like this? And then this last one year of just having like a feeling, you know, like, you know what, like usually, you know, this gut feeling, but I shouldn't assume that, does your gut feeling usually give you the right answer? Um, sometimes. sometimes. Okay. Okay, we'll say it's sometimes you're right. Miss. I like to say most of the time. Okay. But... Okay, hit or miss. We're not going to judge these at all yeah. yet, okay? Um, okay, so let's play now. Um, Okay, so here we played the defense attorney in a way, right? We're like, if we, we'll try our best to defend this thought that it's been really you know, hard on you, okay? But now we're going to play uh, the prosecution in a way. Now we're going to start being really skeptical. We're going to think, okay, so what would be evidence against this claim that I will keep failing, especially at job interviews? Um, well, I did get my... My placement through an interview. Interesting. So, okay. I guess there has been some successes, but some okay. Got placement through interview. I don't know. I just felt maybe because it was placement, it was easier. I don't. Okay. Yeah, it might have been easier. Who knows, right? Um, is there anything else you ever landed through an interview? Did you, did you ever get any other kind of job? Um, I, I did get other retail job. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, but it was just, they were just, they really needed people. I don't know. They really need, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your sense is like, those jobs that you got, maybe 
like it was just maybe a bit easier too because they were just trying to grab people kind of thing. Okay, um, so got, whoops, let's see if I can remember how to spell here. Okay, got other jobs, retail, okay. Um, so how about we just generalize this point past successes, okay. So we've got successes, okay. Um, any other reason to doubt this? Like, what would be evidence against this idea that I'll keep failing? I don't know. This, it seems definite that I'll always fail. And, you know, I will be successful. Like, I, I have the. It just might not be the job I wanted. I don't know. But I just still feel like I'm unsure whether I'll get that next job or not. Ah, oh, good. Okay. So there's uncertainty there too. And yeah, I see you being even-handed there. That that it's really good. So like you're uncertain. This seems to be a really certain claim. Mm -hmm. Like I will keep failing. Yeah. So it seems like, um, like one reason to doubt this could be, you know, we don't know the future, right? Like that. That's just, that's just like a really deep kind of. I mean, it sounds like a deep philosophical thing, but it's like, we really don't know what's going to happen, right? We don't know the future. So we can't really say that, you know, like, we will keep failing, okay? Um, especially in light of these successes, okay? Um, okay. Now, you were telling me a little bit about this before, but what are some things in the interview that you did... Um, at least, um, if not really well, that didn't go so badly. Remember you mentioned a couple of things. Um, I mean, there was a couple of questions I felt yeah. like they did like my answer to, but again, it's reading into it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I, I wasn't completely unprepared for some of the questions, and I felt like I did okay answering them, but like I said, there's some that I felt like I wasn't prepared for at all. Um, so I did answer some of the questions really well, and some of that was just experience mm. through play, placement, right? It, Interesting. Yeah, okay. it gave me a lot of information like that I could bring forward. But um, yeah. That's very interesting. Casey, you did end up using. So my experience, I think, it kind of helped fill in some of those gaps. But, okay. Actually, if you don't mind, I, I, I'm going to put this in a pretty general way. You used past experience as learning for the future. Okay. Now, I want to ask you a question before we go on to any other ones, if you have another one. This is a big one I wanted to just to focus on because I kind of had this floating in my mind, but I wanted to see if you did too. How do you think... This could be a really important point to make. Like, say someone who thinks, I will just keep failing, right? No matter what happens. Now, if you've demonstrated, not everyone does this, by the way, right? Or at least not everyone can do it to a really strong degree. But if you've been someone who can use past experience as learning for the future, how can that maybe put some, some doubt onto this? Um... Maybe I'll be, I have to admit, I tend to memorize, like, remember some of the questions that were asked and maybe just being prepared for at least those questions mm -hmm. the next time so I'm not, like, completely surprised by them. Absolutely. If, yeah. if I ever get a chance to maybe take an interview again or maybe I'll get lucky and they'll interview me again if this doesn't work out. But, um, so just having those questions for me. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so that's one really great example you can use, right? So um, I wanted to write it down for now, but one great example could be, who knows, you could get interviewed, um, um, if not by them for the exact same position that you're on, for a similar um, kind of job type. And because you went through the experience of just, oh my goodness, I was not worried, um, I was not prepped this time around for those questions, you could use that past experience as like 
a harsh, a really annoying lesson to learn. We're like, okay, well, at least now I know they're going to ask me about X, Y, and Z. So I won't spend so much time studying A, B, and C next time, the things they didn't bother at all, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's a really good point. I like that. So you can use um, experiences you've had, from especially like so-called negative ones, as ways of improving your chances next time. Okay. I, um, I feel like I because I can bring some of that knowledge, but there's always that, that gut feeling yeah. that will constantly dog yeah. my thoughts into going. Because if I, that feel of failure will still continue even though I might feel more fulfilled or less. That's a good point. That's a good point. So you've got that gut feeling. And to be honest, you know what? Um, I don't see a decisive case for either one of these, to be honest. I think we've, we've chipped away. So if I was gonna be you know, really honest, and I want you to tell me what you think. Okay, so one way of thinking of this, just before we move on, okay, one way of thinking of this is, if possible, when you came in here today, like if you were to put this on like zero to 100%, what would you say like your commitment to this kind of belief would have been, this thought, you know, what would have been like, uh, Coming in here, it was like 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep failing. Like, okay, so. Or it's just so <laughs> not going to hear nothing from them. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put here, when you first came here today, let's be honest, 100%. Yeah. Okay? And again, that's another way of us saying it totally makes sense of all those feelings you mentioned before. Sad, nervous, worried, scared, like all that stuff we talked about. Now again, right, we didn't make a decisive case as like the prosecution on this side. Because like you said, you still have this really powerful gut feeling. It's not gone yet. Right? Like that, like, oh, I, I just, but do you think we've, we've, we've kind of poked um, enough at this to bring this number down? Um, yeah. What would you say now, if you were being like really honest with yourself, you don't have to, you know, be nice to me or, you know, okay, it's not about, you know, like this working, you know, um, if you were being really honest, how do you feel so far about that percentage? Uh, 70. 70, so still really high. I'm still feeling that, yeah. that love or, uh -huh. yeah. So still really high, and why would you say 70? Um, because I guess, Maybe there was something I could learn uh -huh. from the past, so some of these arguments, but it's still there. It's, I still have that negative feeling. Yeah. So a 30% drop is, is really significant. That's great. Right? So when I say still really high, it's not oh no, but it means, okay, sure, we've still got that strong gut feeling that's there, right? We have that past that informs the gut feeling. But we, we made some good points here, right? There are some successes. Yeah. We can't predict the future. There's no way we can know if you're going to keep failing. And we also know that one way of guarding against keeping this like failure thing going for the future is that we can actually use the times that we failed already mm -hmm. to keep us from failing in the future. We can use past experience to learn for later. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Now. Until I hear from them, I don't even know if I could ever get that 100% down to, oh, that's, yeah, that's to, a good, to love, but... That's a really good point to make, right? So um, when you hear back from them, before we move on, when you hear back from them, how do you think it might affect that number? Well, that number is either going to be 100% <laughs> or zero. It's either going to... Yeah, it's either going to drop or it's going to, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I hear you. Um, so what I want to do, okay, so let's keep this in mind, okay? So maybe let's, here, what we can do is, because like one of the big pieces of evidence for you is that gut feeling, one of the big pieces of evidence, uh, I mean, favor, uh, sorry, against for you was the fact that we can use our past experience to learn. Here are our numbers. Here's something I want to, well, because CBT is not only about our thinking. Right? One thing that I've been thinking about this whole time you've been talking, okay, is 
we can't just kind of think our way out of problems, right? Like you said, sometimes just the gut feeling is there, and like there's no amount of you know thinking back on your life. Oh, things were okay at that time, or I did this well, or I guess I can learn. Sometimes we actually have to make an actual change in order to believe it, right? Now in CBT, we call this behavior activation. It's a really fancy word for just starting to do some different things, okay? I want you to help me here, okay? Okay. Because now we got, you know, okay, 70% is not a bad number, and I don't think that we have to have you leave here today at zero, right? Like, oh, I don't believe this at all anymore. Mm -hmm. But I want to see if we can bring that number down by having you think about ways that you could kind of change how things are in your life or about maybe how you prepare for interviews mm -hmm. that could bring that number down a little bit. So if you could help me out here, um, yeah. what's something that you could possibly do like not even maybe today or tomorrow, but like something that you could start doing that will change your mind about you, you know, continuously failing for all time. Um, get assistance or help from someone. Interesting. I like how you went right to the big one I was thinking of. Okay, get help, right? Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to leave that one hanging by itself because that's just way too, way too general. How do we get help for this? Uh, interview path. Beautiful. Um, coming in. Today I actually saw an unemployment flyer. Oh, really? So I guess maybe because of the interview it caught my eye. And Interesting. Our okay. So I know sometimes they help. Yeah, I like that. So getting info um, and trainings, that kind of stuff, okay? Anything else that could help us feel a bit differently about this is I'll keep failing. Uh, well, not complain, vent to a friend maybe or talk to someone before I go in because I think it's the, it's the stress of going in there. I think that's what also triggers that feeling right away. It's that initial, oh boy, here we go again. Interesting, yeah, okay. So, I think just talking to someone. Talk to friends. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that one, because I was going to ask you something else at the same time, right? Just imagine that you were talking to a friend in this situation. Okay, so, so imagine that I'm one of your friends, okay? And imagine that I'm the one who told you, oh, I'm just going to keep failing. There's just, there's no way. It's not going to happen. You know, okay, fine, I get it. Yeah, I can use this past experience, but it's not going to help. Yeah, I'm going to keep failing. I, I, I've got this, I've got this feeling. It's there. I can't deny it. What would you tell to a friend of yours who is pouring their heart out to you like that? Uh, I would tell them that they're good at lying to them. <laughs> to tell listen them. to it. Yeah. Tell them. Uh, Your gut is lying to them. Um, um, is there anything you would recommend to them beyond these really excellent tips, right? So they're getting interview prep help or like brochures or training on how to improve um, certain parts. Like anything you would like recommend to them? I would just tell them to think like I got this and like ah. um, just do like this or you know. Interesting. So uh, there are two things I heard there. One is like changing how you talk to yourself. Yeah. Right? Like, I got this. Okay. And doing almost like a little ritual before you kind of go into it. Okay. So this can be important. The reason why we say that's important, by the way, like talking to your friends, is because it also gets you to imagine, like, what would I actually tell another person? Because we tend to be really hard on ourselves, yeah. right? Not just you, by the way. I tend to think the same thing about myself, right? Sometimes when you can separate yourself and think, wait a second, I'm here, but if I was over there, what would I say, right? What would bring me from 70% to like 65. What's one thing I could tell myself, right? Um, yeah, 
And those kinds of things are exactly what I would recommend to someone else. So it's like, why am I not recommending them to me? Because I'm a someone else to somebody too. You yeah. know you see what I mean? Um, so just seeing, say we only focused on these ones, right? It's something I could do is actually get help, right? Especially for interview prep, like specifically too for the kind of jobs that I want. I could get more info about it, more training. I could spruce up my resume, all those good things you mentioned. Would that do anything to the 70% number about in terms of like how committed you are to this idea of like, I'm just going to keep failing? Um, I'm committed to not keeping failing. It's just, I guess that's the thought that I don't want to fail at my next interview. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So I don't actually want to keep failing. Um, yeah. But I definitely could use some, uh, some uh, interview prep. That's for sure. That might help. And rehearse, and they might have better ideas about questions that they might ask. Yeah. Like if I go to an employment office. Absolutely. Um, and my friends are pretty positive people. Mm -hmm. um, so just getting some, even if they're super positive and I'm not, maybe it'll rub off. I don't know. Um, so that would probably bring it down a little bit. Right. And I like how you're being tentative, right? Uh, there's there no wishful thinking I'm hearing from you. I like that kind of like healthy optimism slash skepticism. Like, I, I don't know, right? Um, because this is a kind of prediction I'm asking you to make. I'm asking you to, you know, like, like, if you were to do all of these things, do you think you might change that number? Um, I would, might change it now, but who knows how I'll feel after the next interview if that's the case. I like that attitude. I like that who knows, right? In a way, like that kind of sums up most of what we've been talking about, right? The reason why this thought is kind of so hot is because we're saying something very definitive about something we have no control over in the future, yeah. right? We don't know if, you know, Susan is going to keep failing, right? I think, and I hope you can agree with me, we have some reason to doubt it now. Yeah. Right? And we're not 100% sure. No way. But the good thing is that we're we're nowhere near where we were before. I kind of hope Susan doesn't keep failing. I kind of hope Susan doesn't keep failing. So what I want to try, and the last, you know, kind of corny thing I want to put up on the board, and I want to see if you can help me with this. I'm going to put a little, okay, put a little square here, okay? And what I want us to think of, so this was the initial, like I said, like what we were calling the hot thought, the thing that does all the really heavy, awful lifting. It just, it, it, it's the really bad thing that just kind of detonates in your mind. It sets off the sadness, the anger, the nervousness, all of that. Just, boom, like that's a big thought. Now we've found reasons to be at least a little skeptical about that thought. Right? We don't buy into it as much before. Now I want to see um, if you could think of a thought, of course, we know it's not going to be the opposite thought, right? Mm -hmm. Give you an example. It's not going to be, I'm going to be 100% successful. All right? the time. All the time. In fact, that thought doesn't sound so good either. That, that kind of sets you up for, you know, really big disappointment, right? But yeah. what do you think might be in, maybe like, like a more moderate way to think? Right, if we have, I'll keep failing, what might be kind of like a less kind of absolute extreme way of thinking here, based on what we've been talking about? I may not fail the next time. I may not fail, okay. Maybe I okay. fail. Okay, maybe I won't. Actually, I'm gonna let you write this in a second. Maybe I won't fail. Um, any other thoughts? Could. Six, I, like, successful, like, I don't know. Okay, yeah, there's a whole lot going on there. Um, so maybe I won't fail, I could be successful. Based on what we've been talking about, why do you think you might be successful? Like, what could possibly contribute to that? Um, so it's not just a positive attitude, yeah. right? But, um, just being hopefully more prepared. Ah, okay. Now, how do we roll that into a new thought? 
you know, these ideas around like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to fail. I might be successful. Preparation looks like it's the key there. What do you think? If I prepare, I might be successful. To me, that looks like a way healthier thought to have in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not completely rejecting this one. We're not saying, oh, this one has absolutely no kernel of truth. And who knows, right? This gut feeling is still inside of you, right? Like it's like, oh man, it might happen, right? But at least now we're open to something else, yeah. right? And the way you put, I like the way you put it, you put it as a condition, mm -hmm. right? Something has to happen, I have to do something, and then maybe if I do those things, something else will happen. Mm -hmm. Can you write me a version of that that makes the most sense to you? Okay. Okay, here, maybe then I'll move this out of the way. Okay, so if I prepare, I'll be more successful. And I like the way you put that, right? Because I'll be more successful doesn't mean I'll be more successful every single time I try or in every single thing that I do. It means in general, I'll just be more successful mm -hmm. if I prepare, yeah. right? And I think that's a good way of honoring both of what we did here, right? Because we know from past experience Right? That's where the preparation starts. Like, oh, okay, so this interview didn't go well. Now I know how I need to prepare. But just like we were talking about, you can't talk your way through. Like, you can't look at a mirror and be like, I'm going to be better next time. Like, no. You actually need to get some skills. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why in all CBT work, okay, it's not just your thinking. Sometimes it really is just what you're doing that needs to be focused on. Right? Um, so looking at that, the last step I want us to look at, okay, before, before we close out and I give you something that I want you to try out for the week, okay? So we have this. I'm not going to do the whole ABC model over again, okay? But what I want to do is to think, and this is B, okay? Remember at the beginning, whoops. Can't really um, see that. Can't really see that anymore, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just use yours. Okay. So this is B. At the beginning, we call this a belief, a thought. Okay. So this is our new thought. Now I want you to try as much as you can. Okay. Even if, even if, and it's totally fine if you don't. Even if you totally, even if you don't completely buy into this thought yet. I'm hoping you do. I hope this is at least. Because it's not as if we're trying to get you to say, like, I am 100% going to be great. Like, that's like, uh, no, I, I'd have to, like, imagine what someone might feel, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that, that you at least kind of buy into this one. Like, if we were to do, say, 0 to 100%, how much do you believe that statement? If I prepare, I'll be more successful. Um, how much do you buy into that? 60% maybe? I don't know. Cool. Okay, 60 is good. Okay, 60 is over half. Okay. All right. Now, what we had before, too, were consequences. Okay. And if you remember, the two main consequences we focused on, which is usually what gets people to come into counseling in the first place, is how they feel, right? And what they're doing in life, right? Which are usually like really closely connected. So, now we mentioned that when this guy was you know, front and center, the feelings there were you know, sadness and anger and nervousness, uh, worry and fear, like all sorts of, I mean, those don't sound too fun. Um, what would be the feeling 
with this kind of thought, this kind of belief, especially if this kept going up, this number, what do you think the feeling could be here? Um, I just think feeling prepared. Mm -hmm. Just is a better feeling in general. Like, I, yeah. I might, I feel like I've tried my best or I don't know how to explain it. Like I worked harder for it. Um, so that, I don't know, even, even if I did fail, I know that I did my best. Where this interview, I just, I felt so lost. Uh, I'm hearing at least three possible things, and I want you to tell me if I have them, okay? okay. One is I'm hearing a little bit of hope, right? Like being prepared at the very least will bring up the hope factor, right? Like, yeah. like oh, I mean, if you feel like you've done nothing to get ready for something, mm -hmm. there's hopelessness that sets in. So hopeful could be one feeling, oh, this is not working for me either. Okay. So hopeful is definitely one place to start. Okay. Something else I heard you say is if you feel like you've actually done everything you can, like all the things that you can control, right? Like I prepared for these questions. I did my interview prep. I spruced up my CV and uh, I got dressed well for the interview and I was polite that you checked off all the lists. That to me is a sense of, oh, first, kind of a sense of achievement, right? And how do we feel when we feel like we've achieved something? Um, just more positive. Absolutely. Are there any kind of, and I don't want to like force you into like really swirling around, but um, are there any like positive feelings that come with like achievement? Like, I think the not failing number in hall waiting would be a lot lower. Absolutely. Sure. If you may be like a 50 where I'm just like, I could go either way. Yeah. But it wouldn't be like a, mm, I just did awful. Okay, I'll come back to that. There's definitely a kind of like a reduction in anxiety there, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I was thinking here, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, feeling like you've done everything that you can um, can make you feel a little proud of yourself sometimes. Yeah. Would yeah. that be a stretch? No. No? Okay. Okay, so there might be proud, okay? Now who knows, we could carry this on for like another hour if we wanted to, right? I wanted to just give you a sense of what happens when we change that key middle ingredient, right? Because the basic idea behind CBT, right? And this comes from a very long tradition. In fact, if you want to trace this back in history, it comes probably probably from the ancient Stoic Greek philosopher. It's, it's, it's this basic idea that if you want to change how you feel, right, and if you want to change kind of what you're doing, especially if you don't like what you're doing, mm -hmm. you've got to change how you think, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it's not the stuff that happens to us in life, right? For example, like the interview that didn't go so well or, um, you know, sitting there having to wait on people to call us back, but yeah. we got the job, all that. It's not that stuff that really causes us, you know, to be sad or anxious or worried. It's what we start thinking about those things. Yeah. And maybe today we did this in a really quick, kind of potentially overwhelming way. I hope it wasn't too much, but it was kind of a way of getting us started thinking about how, how we think about something is really important in terms of how we feel about it. Does that kind of make sense? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, how did this process kind of jive with you? How, did, um, how do you feel about this process? It definitely, is, um, definitely helps calm me down a bit just working on it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Even though it's 30%, I guess that's 30% can be less, I don't know, stressful. Yeah, when it comes to stress, 1% is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Absolutely. 
Um, so what I want to get you to do, so in CBT we have homework. Now this is not school homework, but I like to call this, again not to be too corny, I like to call this life work. Because it's the kind of homework that's actually designed to help you improve your life. Okay, um, And the homework is going to be exactly, basically what we did today. right? Um, so what we're going to do okay, uh, is I'm going to send you home with a piece of paper. Um, and it, it's just called My ABC. Okay? Um, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be practicing as often as you want. All I want is that you try to do this at least once if you can. Okay? And the whole point, by the way, of writing this down, okay, and not just having you go home and be like, let me think about what Carl was doing there. And, okay, yeah, there was an event that happened to me. I thought to myself, well, like, that, well, for one thing, who knows if you'll remember it, mm -hmm. or even if you do, if you'll remember it correctly, right? The point of writing it down, first of all, we're going to make sure that it stays on paper, okay? Um, but also, we're going to make sure that you get it out of your head, right? It's really what we call this, this like externalizing or like placing some distance between your thinking and what the thought is. Like the thought sometimes feels like it's us, like, you know, like I'm just this thought of I'll keep failing. Uh, maybe that's where the gut feeling comes from, like I'm a failure, right? It, it just it, it holds you. Sometimes just putting it on paper is like, huh. You're just a thing on paper now, yeah. right? And sometimes I think about you, but you're just here, okay? So, yeah. I, I guess it, it really works to actually like put it on paper because I have Absolutely. to admit I, I don't like journal or anything, so kind of worry that I'll do it, like actually write it down and stuff. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the journaling is not for everyone. Um, you could do stuff like that one day, but this actually is just a very kind of point form, concise to the point kind of thing. Um, so all I'm going to ask you to do is exactly what we did today, right? Um, so something's going to happen to you this week. It doesn't have to be big, right? Um, but I hope it's something more like just, I don't know, like I, I don't know, one person's small thing could be another person's big thing, right? So uh, just, to, just to give you an example, it could be something like, um, someone bumped into you on the bus, right? Yeah. And you immediately felt like enraged, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what I want you to do is, of course, to write down both those things. Like, someone bumped me on the bus, and then the feeling I had, it was many, many feelings. Um, so I felt um, angry, irritated, frustrated, whatever it was. Um, and then maybe you did something too, there was a behavior, right? Maybe you said, something under your breath, like, oh, stupid idiot, or something like that, whatever it was, okay? But I will, what I really want you to do, okay, is not just tell me what happened and how you felt, but I want you to tell me what you were thinking. And that's a hard thing to do. It, it'll take practice, that's why we do homework, okay? Um, and this is one of those things that we don't only want you to do it once, we want you to learn how to do it. It's a skill, right, that even I'm still learning, to be honest, and I do this work, right? It's a skill that we can learn to apply to everything that happens to us so that we don't get so easily caught up. Does that kind of make sense? Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, do you have any questions at all about the homework? Um, no, but I definitely would want to go through this again at some point, maybe, um, because just again, make sure that it's right, because like you said, we kind of went through this today pretty fast, so. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, we can definitely do that, so we can either revisit this, mm -hmm. right? we, we, we can keep working through this, because this sounds like it's a really important thing for you, and anytime you come here, we can also try something else as well, right, and maybe something happened to you I mean, the past week that you want to talk about instead, right? Maybe you're already working towards this. Um, it's truly open-ended. Um, all we need to do every time we meet is to just decide on something and to talk about. Yeah, it would be actually beneficial after a yeah. year back. Cause yeah, yeah. They could be, I mean, it could be all yay, but if it turns out to be negative, which is, like I say, something my gut keeps telling me, mm -hmm. I will definitely need to think 
just those slots, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you might be even hearing back from them before we meet next time. Uh, probably. They said okay. a week, but I don't know. Okay. So if you're comfortable, you might even be able to fill out one of these sheets when you get the news, if you get the news this week. Okay. It doesn't have to be about that, though. I think I would be just as upset if I didn't hear back either. So what mm. would you do? Yeah, so people who say no news is good it's news. Not in this case. Yeah, not, not in Never this case. Right. No, no. Yeah. Okay, well, um, did you have any other questions before we, uh, we end for today? Uh, no, that's, that's it for the computer. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing everything, and I hope this was at least beneficial as a starting point, and I'd be happy to meet with you again. Okay. okay. Thank it was you. a great meeting with you, Susan. Thank you.